the Eastern Cape and the Nelson Mandela Metro, home of Volkswagen and host of the fifth round of the South African Junior Rally Championship. The fifth round of the South African Junior Rally Championship is proudly brought to you by Volkswagen. The Volkswagen Rally started off in dramatic fashion for some of the top runners in the S2000 class with roles in the first two stages for Leroy Poulter, Charles Wilkin and Jaapi van Ikerk. Fortunately, with no serious injury to any of the crews. At the sharp end, Mark Renier took the early lead, chased by Johnny Gemmel and Hafken Fekken. The right Volkswagen crew suffered a broken wheel, however, dropping them to the back of the field. Enzo Kuhn took up the challenge for Volkswagen, finishing third behind Gemmel, with Cronier taking his second consecutive victory of the season. Volkswagen Motorsport is based in a state-of-the-art facility in Utenay, where their race and rally cars are not only designed and built, but also taken apart and serviced after every event. Let's take a tour. Many things happen here after a rally. We firstly check the, the system when the car comes back. At the back end of the workshop, there is a wheel alignment bay where we inspect everything and make sure that the cars inspect what we send it away with and sort of administer what, what, what happened on the event. And then after that, we take the car and have a complete cleanup and then strip it down to the bare body shell. And after that, it becomes uh, an individual style workshop where parts are reworked from the basics, the wheels, the dampers, the springs, all the gearboxes, all the engines in the car get uh, taken down, checked and put back on a dyno and the cycle it is a cycle that's happening all over the world in all workshops and you have many individuals that's responsible for different tasks and once these tasks are completed they bring their parts back to a central point and we assemble the car again for the next event. The design of it is very much the key element to make sure that all the parts that's going to go into a car is correct and they fit 100% correctly and uh, yeah this is the heart of, 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 of making sure that you can repeat work after you've designed something and make it the same for the next car that has to be built. Yeah, here we have a gearbox on the, on the engine stand. Uh, the gearbox will be stripped down completely and uh, all the parts would be inspected and some of them would be x-rayed and then put back in the gearbox, put the whole thing together, set up the diffs and uh, then from there on we put it back into the car. If you look at uh, all the work and the hours that go in there, this is attention to detail at its maximum. This is our prototype uh, machine shop where we do prototype work and uh, we've got two guys working in this area. They manufacture the initial parts for the cars which we're changing and then uh, if sometimes we do even the, the supply to all the cars that depending on the timing and how quickly the parts are required. We have a, a tester here where we test the springs and the shocks. As you know, we after each event, we check the springs for compression. We check the shocks, compare them against each other, and just check how they went through the rally. So do you get all that information off the computers there? Yeah, they tell us everything on a graph, and then we check it. Yeah, on the dyno, we basically simulate the load conditions under which the engine will operate in a race car, and then we can adjust the engine management system for the correct fuel and timing for that specific engine RPM and load position that we require. These engines run very, very much on the limit, so all the power that we create, we need to get the fuel, the right correct amount of fuel and timing at the right time, otherwise uh, the engine will just destroy itself. We are uh, constantly developing, see if we can find the edge over the competitors. Uh, we look at all the attention to detail and uh, the work that the guys in the engine room have done. We come here, we test it, we see if it's right before it goes to every car. Make sure that the engines are on the specification that we require for the race. So what is it like to work in a stable of champions? It's quite awesome to work with an ex-champion and uh, also we're going for the, for the championship. So a winning combination, it's, it is, um, for me it is special, but uh, we're going for wins now. 
One of the secrets of success is a close working relationship between technical staff and rally crew. Now how important is a good working relationship between the driver and his chief mechanic? I think it's very important. Uh, sometimes decisions need to be made so you need to understand each other very well. It's important on the event especially. It's important for the technical staff to inform the driver of any changes and improvements made since the last event. Joining the team this year, former Dakar winner Geniel de Villiers. It's nice to be uh, associated with Geniel. I think he's very professional and yeah, I enjoy him. We're expecting a good result. He was very uh, unfortunate to have that uh, gearbox failure in the previous event, so I think, yeah, you know, the rest of the season will definitely be good. And after weeks of preparation, the four works BT Volkswagen Polos are ready to take on the opposition. After three consecutive inland events, the South African Junior Rally Championship moves to the Eastern Cape for the first of three consecutive coastal events. The 29th Volkswagen Rally continues its tradition of running in the forests that surrounds of Port Elizabeth and Utenegg, with rally headquarters at the impressive Volkswagen Pavilion at the company's factory in Utenegg. The always enthusiastic Eastern Cape crowd gets close to the history and heritage of this long-time supporter of South African motorsport before focusing on the start. We didn't get much stage time from the, the last event. We basically been preparing the car, got the car back on the last week Thursday. So now we should we need to probably use the first stage as a proper test stage and then go for it in the rest of it. All the other events, uh, you know, the guys have been falling by the wayside. So, you know, the number one thing is to get to the end of the day, get to tomorrow. Um, but, you know, with the long stages, you've got to push, otherwise the guys will take too much time off you. The roads are new to us, so today we'll just use to get used to the road conditions and um, maybe just start to defend instead of attacking. Young and old in the crowd, all looking forward to a fantastic event. Wonderful weather conditions after some heavy rain over the last few weeks. Chad Goradi leads the field towards stage one, followed by Grupa Zulu. Big hero amongst the local crowd and Ashley Egg Smith. All of them now on their way to stage one. Special stage one, Kulturama won over 19.25 kilometers in the Longmoor forests. So they're being thrown into the deep end. And after final route check, all is set to go. Chad Koradi leading the field along with Kez Naidu and the Silverton engineering Toyota Aorus. Currently fifth position in the championship. Over Zulu and Carl Peskin in the BP Volkswagen Polo. Only the second event for them in this S1600 car. Ashley Egg Smith and James Aldrich in their Castrol Ford Fiesta. Currently aligned third in the championship, having won the opening round in Quizzer in Natal. Oh, that's Chad Conradi for the second time, and he's certainly struggling. He's uh, dropped a number of road positions. As we go to Craig Trott and Robbie Kutsia in their team total Toyota Runnex, currently lying in second position in the championship. Christoph and Celeste Snyder is a brother and sister pairing in their Volkswagen Polo, currently leading the championship after two wins, a third and a fourth so far in the season. We go on board. This is the first time for them in this area, so they're still learning it. Learning the conditions, the road conditions. Oh, he's working very, very hard behind the wheel, is Christoph. On board with uh, local lad, Mona Janse von Rensburg, along with Rikas Furi in their GC Diesel Volkswagen Polo. Highly rated, this young man, and they're looking for a good result on their home ground. They haven't scored points so far this season, but looking strong. Guy Bottrell and uh, Skalk van Heerden in their Yato Tools Toyota Runex currently lying in fourth position in the championship, and they had their first victory of the season in Class S 1600 the previous round. Father and son pairing Chris and Franz De Witt in their Toyota Corolla. And Stefani Buta and Angela Shields now in their team total Toyota Runex. Also no score for them yet so far this season. First of the S1400, the BP Volkswagen Viva of Megan Villac and Lorraine Duplessis. Currently lying in second position in their class after two class wins so far this season. Oh, there's a problem. Come to a stop there. And yeah, they've got a puncture, so they've got to replace that wheel and it's going to cost them about five minutes in the process. Henk Latigan and Pierre Jordan in their 1400 Q8 Oils Volkswagen Polo, leading class S1400 in the championship at the moment. Oh, and that's a huge understeer moment into the banking. I suspect there's some damage to that car. 
This is not a good start for the very impressive pairing. They've had some solid results so far this season. And coming to a stop, and I suspect that's the end of their rally. Ian Young now, along with Henry Dearlove in their 1400 Toyota Yaris. Also looking to score their first points of the season. Paul Hendrik Franken and Uwe Pei in their 1600cc Toyota Corolla from the Western Cape. And this is Ross Bartle along with Stacey Allen in their 1400cc Volkswagen Golf. So despite not being familiar with the condition, Snyder's takes the stage victory ahead of Haig Smith. Margin now 6.7 seconds between the two of them. The first opportunity to do some servicing and look back at stage one. The stage was going well um, and then we had some fuel starvation problems and we stopped in the stage. Uh, we lost a lot of time. We carried on again, it went well, and then we pulled off because Ashley caught us. The last stage was a bit rough, so we broke a seat, well, boots on the CV, so we're just changing precaution and then um, you know, basically just going through. Nothing about check checking the shocks, I think I might damage the shocks, but otherwise, no, it was good. The roads are quite slippy, it's more slippy than I expected. So um, I think we'll just use the next two stages to, to get, get a bit more confidence. On to stage two now, Kingsview one that's the longest on the rally, just over 34 kilometers of dirt and a real challenge to all the crews. Already out, unfortunately, Bubu Zulu with engine problems and we saw Henk Latigan retire. This is Conradi, now 12th after those problems with his fuel in special stage one. I'm not sure that they've resolved those problems yet. Ashley Egg Smith in second position by that margin of 6.7 seconds. We go on board with them and uh, there is the stricken Leroy Poulter. And Ashley would set the fastest time of the stage at this point. Craig Trot lining in fifth position after stage one. And he's trying to push very hard now, and he would go second fastest behind Haig Smith. Snader's leading after stage one. Looking like they're reveling in these uh, conditions. We go on board. And he would go second fastest after Haig Smith by about seven seconds at the end of the stage. Mornay Janssen van Rensburg currently lying in third position. He's from the Eastern Cape, and in fact, he's a 2009 Eastern Cape regional champion. We go on board, and he has got his foot absolutely down. He would go fastest by more than five seconds in this stage. Guy Bottrell, can he better the time? He's currently in fourth position, but no, he goes four and a half seconds slower than Janssen van Rensburg. Chris de Witt now in seventh position. Stefani Burta just ahead of them in sixth place after stage one. Young leading his 1400 after stage one. So Janssen van Rensburg goes fastest in stage two, and he now leads Haig Smith by 0.7 of a second with Snader's in third. The stage was pretty awesome. It was flowing, the car turns like on a Niki. It's just powerful. Every time you change the gear up, it just goes forward and forward and forward. It's like brilliant. From the last few nationals till now, my confidence went just up, up and up. So we'll try and check what the car does at the end of the day.